As always, it is a pleasure being with you each and every Monday morning. You're just in time for the next conversation of the day. And today is all about youth and politics. My name is Ram Aguko. If at all you're just joining us, this is Why in the Morning. Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. We are coming to you live from our broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We're also live on our website www.kbc.co.ke. First slash Y254. Ensure that you engage with us on our social media platforms. The hashtag is Y in the Morning at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel is where you can find us. Ensure that you also head over to Facebook and drop in your comments comments there on Facebook and on Twitter. Remember, this is a conversation that comes just in time in regards to politics. We shall take a look at what has been trending in the past one week, what has been taking center stage in the political arena, and uh, exactly what should we be looking out for moving forward. Uh, joining me in the studio, I'm joined by one Janet Ruthuku. She is the national chair at the Jubilee Young Women Caucus. Good morning, Janet. Yes, Santa Oh, 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 I said Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for having me today. You're welcome. As You're well? Yes, yes, yes. Very well. Very well. Uh, how, yeah. how can people find you on social media? Because that's a, we, we are with we are the big person here. But, huh? Janet Mwangi Rothuku. Janet Mwangi Rothuku. Yes. On yes. every social media platform. Yes. I, I'm only active on Facebook. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, my Instagram and my Twitter is not very, very active. Okay. So, okay. yeah, we try and shape conversation on that other end on, of the on social Facebook. media. Yes. Yeah, actually, yes. Facebook is uh, I'm also quite interesting early active on uh, Facebook more than Oh, uh, oh, the other social media. Yeah, yeah, more than uh, Instagram. I, I'm not good at taking selfies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I find it weird. <laughs> oh well, yeah. as, as a man. But uh, thank you so much for uh, thanks for coming. Um, I want us to have this conversation and. Uh, we will kick start with the women caucus yes. for jubilee yes i uh, would like to find out what it's all about okay. because it, it's not something that i've been hearing for for long as an yes. individual yes. May, maybe you have heard about it uh for for long if you have t mm -hmm. you know bring in your questions in regards to the the women caucus of jubilee what is their position their role their stand are they effective what is it that we should be looking out for when it comes to women in leadership you yeah. know um so let's kick start from there what is the Women Caucus all about in Jubilee? Uh, for starters, uh, Jubilee is a party that has been in existence since 2016. You mm. remember when uh, uh, all the parties that were that, that merged that uh, came to form Jubilee. Yeah. And in the Jubilee uh, constitution, there is a youth league and there is a women league. Yes. So the Young Women Caucus falls under the Women League okay. uh, in, in, okay. in the Jubilee Constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, there has been this conversation, oh, I don't know, uh, Jubilee Mekufa, I don't know, Jubilee has done what. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as women, we have a lot that we can give uh, to this country because world over there are countries where revolutions have been uh, brought about by, by women, women and mm -hmm. even young and, and more so young women. So uh, what we intend to do as the Jubilee Young Women Caucus is uh, because it is true, there has been problems in our party. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, some, uh, that is something we cannot shy away from. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> yeah. But then again, mm. <coughs> as, as, as she, she calls, mm -hmm. uh, someone to uh, mm -hmm. Coppola Maji. <laughs> Coppola Maji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but I love what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're saying that, yes, Jubilee has been in existence. Yes. And it is, it is, it is a fact that, you know, uh, it has been draining for yes. quite some time. Yes. Is, is, is this one, one, one particular uh, reason why we have not been seeing vibrancy, especially from the young women, uh, you know, uh, from the women caucus? Or, has, or, or is it that it has been vibrant, but it's only that we are not seeing so much conversation in, in that particular area? Uh, I, I think it's also because of the political environment. Mm. Uh, it's not that uh, the caucus has been dead. You remember mm. there was a time that there was uh, Team Embrace. Yes. Team Embrace is part of the Women Caucus. Uh -huh. It's part of the Women Caucus. So it, was, it, it has been a conversation that has been ongoing. Uh, in 2017, during elections, uh, we had uh, uh, the Women Brigade 
yeah. which is part of uh, the Women the Caucus, women caucus. Uh, but also the political environment currently. Uh, I remember when Embrace died, it was because the president said, I do not want this politicking because it is bringing a lot of heat in the country because mm. you can remember there, there was like, it was a competition uh, uh, of two groups within Jubilee Party mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there was the team Embrace and there was the Inua Mama. Mm. Uh, one wing was uh, was uh, was uh, purporting to support the deputy president, who is the deputy party leader mm -hmm. uh, of our party, uh, and and it, it's it's really hard when a party is fighting within for that party to stand. It, it, it is very hard, and that is why they have, there has been so many infights. But then again, we as women and as young women, we ask ourselves, ukiwa uh, na nyumba. Mm. Do you demolish the house? Mm -hmm. No. You mend. Mahali maji na ingililia apondo unaziba. 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 Those who want to leave, that, let them live. And we have, I've seen so many uh, women defect. Yes. Women leaders defect. Mm -hmm. How has it been, you know, trying to manage all this as the national chair mm -hmm. uh, for all women? Because we are, we are, you have offices across the country mm -hmm. in different counties yes. that represent women. Yes. How is it trying to, you know, uh, uh, put in that or, 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 or whipping your mm -hmm. women into uh, the line, to toe the line in regards to the party principles and the party rules and regulations? Uh, you see, we are at a time whereby uh, we are in an e electioneering period. Yeah. And uh, at this particular point, uh, it's just a, ma it's, it's a matter of principle, not even about whipping. Mm. Because what we have is a movement where we are not coercing anybody to join. We okay. want people with uh, similar ideologies because uh, if we still had TNA and URP as two different wings mm. we wouldn't be where we are today because TNA would have remained as TNA and mm. we would have our caucus as TNA and URP would still remain as URP those who want to join URP to join but then when you when you say about whooping people uh, yes for you to be part of us you have to agree to our ideologies not that you're coming in to bring your own ideologies. But at the same time, you're saying that anyone wants to come can come, anyone wants to leave can leave. Yes. How, anybody, how, how, how do you ensure anybody that who they, wants to come in? Ideologies? Anybody who wants to come and be part of us, because right now, like I said, we're in an electioneering period, mm -hmm. and uh, people are trying to identify with where they belong. But uh -huh. if you want to identify with somewhere you belong to, you have to subscribe to their ideologies. Uh, because like now for the, yeah, what we have had was uh, the Jubilee Women League. We've not had a young women caucus. Uh, but as it stands now, we want more women, more young women to be, to, to, to represent us in the national platform. Mm -hmm. We want to do away with this, uh, with, with this formula whereby you're just rewarded with like one slot. And we have so many young women in this country. Yeah. We want to do away with the tokenism. So what do we do? We create a space. We create a space for the upcoming young women. I was a student leader mm. uh, in campus. I got a platform. And now I, I have gone to the national platform. What we want to do is to hold hands of our younger sisters so that they do not have to go through what we went through. Does, the, does being in the caucus yes. give a woman yes. a an advantage in the political arena. Yes, yes, they do. Because what we do, uh, we have uh, friendly MPs, we have friendly women reps mm. who hold our hands. Because as, as I'm telling you, the Young Women Caucus is under the Women League. Yeah. And one of the biggest challenge uh, a young woman in politics can face is this in this country is lacking a, 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 a solid mentor. Yeah. There are so many mistakes as a young woman you can make in politics. Mm. Uh, from uh, from from making wrong decisions, not knowing when you're vying what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But when you have a proper mentor, when you have an older woman 
to hold your hand. Mm -hmm. A woman who has been in the arena. Like now for the Young Women Caucus, we have so many mentors. We have my woman rep, Sabina Chege, yeah. is one of, my, uh, one of my greatest mentors. Priscilla Nyokabi, commissioner, the former Nyeri woman rep. One of uh, the DG Kiambu, the DG Nyeri. These mm -hmm. are the women we are looking up to. And, 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 and they fall under the Women League? Yes. Uh, not under the Young uh, Women no, Caucus? No, no. The Young Women Caucus is under the Jubilee Women League. Uh -huh. We which, are women. Of which now the, those who are governors and women reps fall yes. under the, the women league. We also fall under the women league because we are women in okay. Jubilee. But now we want the young woman to identify herself. In that umbrella. In that umbrella. Uh -huh. And then whenever you have, uh, maybe there's an activation you have in, in the county. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you need relevance. You need somebody to give you a platform to shine. Yeah. How will people know that you can do something for them when you do not have that platform? Uh, because at the end of the day, we do not want to be uh, a caucus that is only here in uh, Nairobi and social media. Yeah. We want to go to Mashinani. Our interest is that young woman in Muranga County. Because the, 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 the women league, you, see, uh, you have offices uh, across different yes. counties. Yes. But now it is a caucus yes. that uh, needs more emphasis in the, in the respective counties. Yes. How, yes. How, how, how far are you in, in ensuring that is achieved for the counties? So far we have uh, representative in, uh, representatives. Uh, we have representatives in every county, especially mm -hmm. in Mount Kenya region. Okay. Uh, we have a representative in every one county that is representing uh, the counties. And each of these young women uh, have another... Um, uh, not um, an umbrella. This, uh, this young women who head these counties uh, have already formulated uh, whereby we have sub-county representatives. Uh -huh. Then the sub-county representatives have, uh, have uh, formulated uh, a structure where we have uh, ward representatives because we want to go down to the to the woman there in the in the ward, regardless it, of the politics that is taking center yes, stage at the moment. Regardless, but what we are doing is we want women who we share the same ideologies. I'm a support. I'm one of the greatest supporters of our president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, mm -hmm. and and I believe he has done so much for this country. Like. We have not had a commissioner who was uh, made a commissioner at 28 years old. But yeah. right now we have Wamboi yeah. Nyoto, yeah. Uh, yeah. who is from my county, mm -hmm. uh, a 28 year old who is a commissioner. Uh, but we want more than that just than, than just one commissioner we want ambassadors you want to be we felt want, as women yes we want uh, yes as women and as young women because mm. we contribute a lot we contribute a lot to this country and when elections come uh, many of us are involved actively and because of lack of mentors and lack of knowing what happens during the campaign period yeah. how to lobby for positions how mm. to lobby for nominations in the county assemblies in the senate in parliament all those positions there you, you will find most of the women do not know how to go about it i want us to move to the next particular uh, 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 aspect that uh, uh, I need your opinion on but mm -hmm. before we do that mm -hmm. i want you to voice mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts to that young lady who is watching you today they want to vie for a, a, a position next year mm -hmm. they want to join politics mm -hmm. they want to become leaders they want people to, they want to become people who can have a voice mm -hmm. and they're ladies they're young as uh, uh, you know you're trying to fight for the people that you're trying to vouch for yeah. speak to that particular uh, individual who is watching you what word would you have for them just mm -hmm. in 30 seconds or so uh, for any young lady who is getting into politics right now, what I would, I would say is have a vision, have a mission, and be a transformative leader. Because that is what will make a difference in this country. Mm -hmm. We have so many uh, upcoming young leaders. And what I will tell them is walk the talk. Don't walk the talk. Yes, walk the talk. Don't just say what you are saying, but don't walk it. Say something that you know you will see through. And also have mentors. Mm -hmm. We underestimate what mentors can do to us. And as young women, we need people who can work with us, people who can wear our shoes, people who have been there and know how, how much we struggle to get into leadership positions. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much. That is <laughs> uh, walk the talk. You know, you know, it's quite interesting how uh, we've, we've, we've seen some women who are branded as flower girls. Yes. 
they say that uh, this for for example the position of uh, women rep yes some say that no it's just uh, something ya ku kurembesha <laughs> I, 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 I honestly don't think so because it, it, it depends so. with the individual mm -hmm. of who you elect you can, you can actually make an impact yes. in that position I, I will give you a very good at example mm. look i'm at my woman rep sabina chege what has she been able to achieve? Man, she's very vocal. Eh? <laughs> what has she been able to achieve as a I'm, woman I'm representative? What she did for the school going girls. Yes. Yes. E even in on matters health. Mm. She's the chair of health. She was the chair of education. It does not limit you. The, uh, the saying that a woman rep seat is a flower girl seat. It, it is not. It all depends with the individual who you elect to that seat. I want us to move to the next particular story here of the day. Uh, last week, mm -hmm. we had a pronouncement. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it, it was a declaration yes. uh, in church. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I know you saw it. Yes. When every political leader was told, stop. Yes. They were told, you are not going to talk on this pulpit. Yes. It was such a great uh, a, a, a day. Many leaders who went there. We had, uh, uh, you know, uh, many things that were said. I, I don't want to get into the, into the nitty gritties, but Honorable Musala, Musala Mudavadi was there, uh, you know, uh, and, and many leaders, of which Honorable Mudavadi was uh, accused of not respecting women after he left the, mi the, the meeting. Uh, after uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, uh, had declared that you know they are not going to speak in that particular forum. But what is interesting is one week down the line, after they are saying no, the church and the pulpit should not be mixed. Uh, I mean, the church and politics should not be mixed. There should be separation. One week down the line, we are seeing in the headlines today different leaders speaking in church yesterday including Honorable William Ruto. He was uh, backing calls to have politicians stay away from the pulpit while addressing the uh, Gidaidi church at uh, Kiambu. We have Honorable Musala Mudavadi who was uh, urging faithfuls at uh, Chebuane Methodist Church to vote for him. We have Honorable Justin Muturi who, who was urging faithfuls at the St. Uh, Michael's uh, Catholic Church at Embu County to exercise tolerance. And, you know, speaking of different things, we have Honorable Gideon Moy <laughs> who was also there, the, the, the kind of boss who was uh, talking at uh, Kiyui Salvation Army Church in Machakos, uh, talking about the One Kenya Alliance as the best place to be. Still, politics is coming back to church. Yeah. And it's quite interesting how vibrant it was last week. One week down the line, things have changed. Your thoughts on that? Uh, one, I, uh, I would want to disagree with what people said about Honorable Musalia that he disrespected women because yeah. of getting out of church, mm -hmm. because he was coming to an event in Muranga. Yeah. And that was, uh, they were in Bungoma. Yeah. But uh, he was coming to Muranga because he was a chief guest yeah. at an event there where we were doing a fundraising uh, to, or, or, of a school that Sabina Chege supports. Mm -hmm. That is why he left early. Mm -hmm. So I would want to retaliate that. Yeah, I, I remember he even said that he had sent his apologies to uh, 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 Bishop Sapit. And yeah. he had to leave. Yes. And, but he was running late for that yes. fund fundraiser. Yes. And uh, I, I even saw videos when he was trying to leave with the, the you know, uh, from his chopper. Yeah. Uh, of which many, many leaders, including ODM leaders, mm -hmm. uh, stood up against it. And mm -hmm. they say that, uh, that he ought to have planned himself that Alijua, how Amijipanga, uh, Bona, mm -hmm. uh, the timing was wrong, mm -hmm. things like that. But it maybe, was quite interesting. Maybe yeah. it's just politics. But yeah. this is what I have to say. Mm -hmm. When uh, Ola Sapit said that there should be no politics in church, it is something I agree because mm. you will find that politicians are sometimes very dishonest people. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you told them uh, to come for a harambe and contribute and not given a chance to speak at the podium, they will not show up. They will not show up. So I think it is a good thing if we do away with politics in the church. Uh -huh. Or rather, if, uh, if a, a politician is given a chance to speak in church, they are told they, they should not politic. They should not talk anything about politics. You're there mm. just like any other congregant. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come and show stop in church. That is not a place to come play politics. And I, I, I think if uh, the problem is we have uh, 
very different constitutions for different churches. Mm. Uh, you will find like the grounded churches, that is the Catholic Church, uh, the Anglican Church and the Presbyterian Church. Uh, have some solid rules that are followed. But when you go to these other Pentecostal churches, they do not have, uh, 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 I, I, I don't want to say that they do not have a solid uh, standing, but. There's, what, a, there's a flexible. Yeah, right? they're, they're flexible because you see some of these churches are trying to establish themselves. And uh, if a politician is coming and donating a lot of money mm. for you to be able to develop as a church, mm. you know, I, but there's a problem because the church has always been that thing that brings us together. Yeah. And you saw even when the church came and said uh, that uh, we can do the reconciliation between the president and the deputy the president. Deputy, yes. uh, people are not for it because the church has been involved so much in politics. The church has been seen to take sides, mm. which is not something that should happen. It should be that moral fabric that... Uh, that can guide a country between the right and the wrong. When you say that, uh, actually, I, I agree with you that mm -hmm. uh, different churches have run under different, uh, uh, you know, constitutions. Mm -hmm. uh, some are, up, are upcoming. I saw it was uh, these in the, in the, in the, a few days ago, if I'm not wrong. We we have a, a particular is it a bishop in Kakamega mm -hmm. who was given a, a, a car yeah. uh, by the deputy, the deputy president. The deputy yes. President. Yes. A, brand, uh, a Suzuki, a, actually. A Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> you know, should, should churches reject donations? Because you're still coming up. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's not like the Catholic, because there are some who may argue, or a Pete could be able to have that particular stand mm -hmm. because they are established. Yeah. There are some other churches who do not have that same uh, form or similar mm -hmm. establishment. Yeah. So if yeah. you give a pastor a brand new car mm -hmm. uh, or you donate some money towards mm -hmm. church development, they mm -hmm. will take it. Yeah, they will take it. But now my, my question is, if you are given a chance to donate and not given a chance at the podium, will you still donate? That is the biggest uh -huh. question. Will you still donate if if, 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 if you are donating you. in kind, not that you're expecting something in return? Okay. If you're given a chance to go build a church, but you're not given the podium as a politician, mm -hmm. or you're not given a chance to do your politics, you're not given a chance to attack the leaders or whatever they do in church. Give any comment that is political. political. Will well, you still do that? That is the biggest question. Because it is very sad that today politics have been taken to our churches. And if, if there's something I admire about our president, and if, you, if you've noticed, he doesn't politic in churches. He doesn't. He just goes to church because he wants to go to church. Or rather, when he's given a chance to address a podium in a church. He doesn't talk about politics. Actually, his, his and and are, are mostly general. Yes, mm. and, and, and that is why you find people saying, oh, our president, uh, uh, I, I don't know, he's, he's not talking about politics, there's a crowd, he doesn't talk about politics. But I think it's, it's all about uh, principles. And, and if you look at the Catholic Church, I, I remember there's a time we were at, at an event in Muranga, where Dr. Matiangi was the chief guest, mm. uh, it was uh, for the it, it it was an event for the diocese. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at the Catholic Church, I think it's one of those churches that have really tried to avoid politics in their churches, because in that meeting we had all the members of Parliament in Muranga County, we had the CSAs, we had the PSAs, but they were not given a chance to speak at the podium. Because the father said, you did not come here to do politics. You did not come here to do politics. So we are not going to give you a chance to do politics. And uh, it was only one person who was given a chance to speak on behalf of all other politicians. But they were told, mm. you will not politic in my church. Or rather, in our church. There's some who, who, and who, who. true to the word of the father, mm. there were no politics in that church. At all, at all, at all. They did not speak anything about politics. It, it's interesting because I think I think there's you you need to check the position of power which mm -hmm. you speak from. Mm -hmm. What position of power do we uh, actually speak from? At what 
instance, mm -hmm. are we expected to uh, invoke some some of these uh, privileges mm -hmm. that uh, exist? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, if we are to invoke some of these privileges that exist, mm -hmm. what are the ripple effects? Putting that into context, mm -hmm. we have the political leaders who want to vie. Mm -hmm. We have the OCA mm -hmm. people, UDA. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your recommendation mm -hmm. to the church that at the end of the day needs to have that interdependence yeah, with, yeah. With, with these political leaders? Yeah. Because before you invoke a particular power, yeah. you must have really thought about it strategically. Yes, yes. Uh, you see, there has been a very good relationship previously between the political class and the religious class. It's only now that we are seeing them clashing, even tear gas being thrown into churches Imagine. because of uh, different ideo ideologies mm -hmm. in terms of political stance. Yeah. So what I, I think should happen in our churches, because at the end of the day, as uh, we do recognize religious leaders, and at the same time we, we, we recognize political leaders. Mm -hmm. So what should happen is, if a leader by standing goes to a church, and they want to address a congregation, yeah. what should happen is they should be given a chance to address the congregation, but there should be a clear guideline on how that is done. For example, they should be told that there should be no politics when, when honorable inside church. When William Ruto went to, 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 to church, it was a uh, gither, 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 Mm -hmm. Church. Mm -hmm. That and, was yesterday. Uh, as he was uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. He and he told people that uh, he is in support of the banning of politicians to the pulpit. Yes, you're he talking does, about the He also doesn't encourage politicking on the pulpit. Yeah, you know that's very ironical, <laughs> because this is a person who has been taking his politics to the pulpit since when they started falling out with the president. And the president said uh, that him, he's looking at development first. But it is quite ironical coming from the deputy president because I, 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 I think every Sunday he's at a different church politicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember there was even a time they were at a church in Nakuru uh, where uh, Governor Lee Kenya Njui stood and said that it is very wrong that now we are bringing our politics to church mm -hmm. because uh, he was echoing what some of the members of, and, and you know, it's quite hypocritical when you, when you stand at a pulpit and say that uh, we should not bring politics to church. And this is a pulpit whereby those who follow you or those who purport to speak for you mm -hmm. get on that pulpit, that talk politics. all manner of things, all manner of things in church, and you just sit at there smiling and clapping. And then you come tell us you should not bring politics to church. You want to alienate yourself from the year comments, yet you are their cheerleader. So you are their it, biggest cheerleader. I'm, I'm seeing this as something that will, is, is a fight to the church will never win, is it? Uh, if the church wants to win, huh. and if the church comes together, like I've told you, huh. the, uh, those, uh, the Presbyterians, the, uh, the Anglican, huh. and the Catholic, Catholic yeah have been able to somewhat ground what comments politicians speak in their churches. You will even find that some politicians are banned to speak in a particular church because of comments they made there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if the church could come together, mm -hmm. whether the Anglican or uh, these other Pentecostal churches, if they could come together and come up with a way of saying, the religion is starting to divide us mm. than bringing us together mm -hmm. uh, because of whatever political stand one has. Because we're starting to see where churches have uh, a certain political leaning. Uh, because it's starting to see as if this particular church supports, supports this and this, this person. Mm, mm. This particular church supports this and this person. But what, is, what exactly are you doing to that person who comes to church uh, for spiritual nourishment. What are you doing to them when okay. you bring ch politics to your church? Now, the I want us to move to yet another thing. Well, which, that, that issue of politics in church, I don't know how it will, how, how, how it will uh, end in the long it run. Is, it is actually very simple. Mm. Just say, uh, when you come to our church or when you go to a church, 
you are given a podium to speak. Mm. Speak and uh, talk to the congregants because you are a leader mm. and you lead those people. But do not bring politics to the pulpit. Talk about general things. And we have a very good example in our president. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, keep, 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 keep commenting. I'm seeing uh, Musamali Meshak and someone watching from Bungoma. Thank you so much, Jackson Kavoy. That is on Twitter uh, for dropping in your comments and as I'm watching, following the conversation. Uh, thank you so much, Lean and Jerry, Asande Sana, uh, Margaret, as, uh, uh, watching you from Manieri. Uh, interesting conversation. I love the conversation with uh, uh, Mweshimiwa there, Asande Sana. I'm saying this is uh, uh, Maxwell, and I said, I love the conversation. Keep it up, enjoying it, watching you from my home in Rai. Okay. Uh huh. This is. Uh, let me move quickly to uh, the final comment here. This is. Uh, uh huh. This is Lavenda, and I said, I think uh, enjoying the conversation, watching you from uh, Kangundo Road, Asanda Sana Lavenda. But keep commenting, keep texting. Tell us where you're watching us from as we continue with this conversation. I want us to move to the next thing, uh, 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 Janet. Yes. In Parliament. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, the deputy president went uh, and I, I saw his, uh, his address. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was a public address when he was saying he doesn't support the idea that you're trying to bring back the BBI through some bills uh, uh, that are in parliament. Currently, we have a bill that is in parliament and uh, this conversation is one that is starting up a lot of debate where well, we have uh, the proposal to have a prime minister, two deputy presidents, two deputy prime ministers. What are your thoughts in regards to that? <clears throat> I was one of the biggest supporters of BPI because I believe in equal representation. Mm. Uh, I believe in uh, fair distribution of, uh, of resources because that is one of the biggest injustices we have. And the same deputy president who was saying that. I, uh, they, I, I don't know whether you've seen this clip. I think that was in 20, the clip was done in 2010, mm -hmm. whereby he was saying that uh, it does not make sense for a county like Kiambu, mm -hmm. which have uh, close to a million residents, and a county in, uh, in the Kose Lamu County, which has 100,000 residents uh, to receive the same allocation number, yes. when it comes to distribution of resources. Mm -hmm. It is not fair. Yet this is the same person who we've really been fighting this. We had the, the bill in Senate of one man, one shilling, one vote. Yeah. And uh, if you look at his uh, allies, or rather allies that are seemed to be supporting the deputy president, they really oppose that bill. There's your one, 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 one shilling, one vote. Because ideally, yeah. that is what should happen. Because it, does, it honestly does not make sense for a county like Kiambu with all those people to receive the same allocation with counties that have 2,000 people, uh, 200,000 people. And, and yet in Kiambu, uh, uh, we are talking about two point something million. When you time a particular member of parliament was mm -hmm. mentioning Wajia. Mm -hmm. You know, saying that uh, you cannot even, 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 even talk about the same allocation as Wajia. Yeah, you yeah. cannot. And this is a county that also gets their equalization fund because it is, a, it is seen as a marginalized county mm. at the end of the day. And now Kiambu, uh, a county like Kiambu is seen as, it, 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 is not a margin, it, it is not termed as a marginalized county. So, so these bills should be done away with? Yep. Or should, they be, should, should we proceed? I think it parliament? should proceed. Like I said, I was one of the biggest supporters. Those things that can be able to be passed through parliament, because anyway, if BBI had passed, these things okay. would have gone through parliament. So it does not mean now that because BBI did not pass, those things cannot be passed in parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one of the biggest challenges we usually have is when a bill, like when we come to young people, like the tax holidays, yeah. Uh, the help issues where you're told that you will be given uh, a grace period of four years because before you start repaying mm -hmm. and uh, it will not have an interest. When you're given four years and then you'll start being, you'll start repaying it when you start earning an income. You see some of these bills when they go to parliament, they are taken rounds in circles, mm -hmm. you know, 
runs in circles and they end up not passing. So if there is a way now that we can be able to solve some of this, these issues, then why not? Why not? Because these is, are is, issues. In, in, in and, and, and you see, this is not like they're saying that we are going through the back door. Exactly. That is Honorable not going through the back, we're following the back door. Why, why do we need, now that the bill what, what, was rejected, uh -huh. now that it did not go through, uh -huh. of which there are many who, who, who celebrated and said reggae has stopped, uh -huh. but now we are trying to bring back reggae through the back door. It is, I, I will tell you why it is not a back door. Because uh, they are the same people who are saying, BBI is not bad in entirety, in its entirety. And that is why we'd want, when we go to the ballot, if mm. the BBI goes to the ballot, we want to have a choice on which things to tick and which, which ones not to tick. So at the end of the day, it means there are those items that they knew were good in that document. And they are the same things that are being tabled in parliament. If they were good in the BBI document, then why do they become bad? And it's not being taken through the back door because that is the work of parliament, is it not? To, to make bills. laws and to, 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 to propose bills. There it is, is their work. I, I, I was seeing on Twitter, <laughs> I don't know, uh, I, I think it's a particular senator who was saying he has not heard the, the song by Lucky Dube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being, <laughs> being, I don't know if you saw that tweet. It has no, I didn't. Played, it, 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 it has not been playing for, for quite some time now. <laughs> and um, the question now that uh, was, was being asked uh, mm -hmm. you know, around this particular conversation is, why didn't we go for the bills in the first place? Why did we go for the, the, the initiative mm -hmm. uh, uh, that at the end of the day was going to be considered as unconstitutional? You know, is it a, 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 uh, an issue of strategy? Um, I, I think it is because some of the things that were being proposed to be made as changes needed to go through a referendum. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they can't pass through parliament on its own because there are things that are being amended in our constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that to happen, we have to go through a referendum. Like the issue of uh, the prime minister and the deputy prime minister, mm. that's not something that uh, parliament can pass on its own because that is altering our constitution. We, we will need uh, a, a we referendum. Will, yeah, I'm saying they're talking about it being, da being uh, done at this, uh, the same, same day as the general election next day. If that happens, I, I, I am not sure that is what is being proposed for, mm. for it to happen. But... It cannot come from Parliament. It has to start from the county assemblies again. Yeah, it is, exactly. it, is, it is not something that Parliament can just pass. So I think some of it is just misinformation because that is not something Parliament can pass in our constitution. Mm -hmm. I think it's just misinformation and people just trying to play politics with it. I think the things that I, and I, I believe that is the Bill Cuny that uh, Jeremiah Cuny, yes, the MP from Daragua, the, yes. uh, he proposed in Parliament. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, it includes need, things that need to alter our constitution. I think it in, uh, what, what he has proposed is things or bills that can be passed in Parliament. Oh, the Deputy President said that we, this issue is wasting Kenyans' time. We need to focus on our other uh, how, issues. That how is important. it wasting Kenyans' time and these are things that affect us? the equal distribution of resources uh, when it comes to representation. Those are the things that affect us as Kenyans. What else then is, is, is he talking about if, if these are not things that affect us? Uh, because if we go to the other thing of the way you're saying the referendum being held the same day with the elections, that is something Kenyans have to decide. Mm -hmm. It is not upon Parliament to decide. Okay. It is Kenyan to, Kenyans to decide whether they want a referendum or not. But, but as it may, mm -hmm. this is ju just still trying to bring back the BBI, but through a different pr uh, procedure. Yes, they are trying to bring aspects of some aspects of BBI mm -hmm. that do not have to go through a referendum. Mm -hmm. okay. We can solve the first things first. Uh, mm -hmm. What we can be able to solve, that, let's solve it. And then the rest will come later. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, that's progress, okay. and it's what we are looking for as a country. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking of progress, mm -hmm. uh, my director is telling me that he we, we want to take a look at uh, your progress mm -hmm. and uh, your, your your plans. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can just give uh, tell us in brief. Mm -hmm. um, 
what aspirations are you having uh, as an individual mm -hmm. um, moving forward come 2022? Um, mm -hmm. Is it too early to tell? I don't know. <laughs> what plans do you have uh, moving forward? Because mm -hmm. we have seen you in different, uh, uh, you know, uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, championing for different things. Mm -hmm. I saw you in Kiamba. Was yeah, it in Kiamba? Yes. 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 Oh, plans that you're having? Um, if you're asking about political ambitions, mm -hmm. I don't plan to buy mm -hmm. in, uh, in the near future. Maybe after 10, 20, uh, 10 15 years, maybe mm -hmm. I'll go for an elective position. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do now is uh, to solidify what I believe in. You see, what happens for a young person in politics? Mm. Tunarukaruka sana. Tunarukaruka mm. sana. So I, I want to have to, to have a solid ground first. Mm. Mm. I, I want to have a solid ground first. You and to, to learn the ropes. First. And to learn the ropes in politics. Okay. Because politics is dirty. Mm -hmm. I, want, I probably want to have a family. I want to start a family. Mm -hmm. I want to have a fallback plan is if politics doesn't work. We're seeing, I want we're to build a life first. We're seeing uh, a Burudi Koyopija. There's something that was running on the screen as you were talking in that one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the Jubilee Women Caucus. In that meeting, I think you can see some of our older women y yeah. in, uh, in the caucus. You're trying to, to, to ensure that you build a brand, that you lay a, a strong foundation for yourself. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, yeah, that one, we, we were at a training at mm. uh, Sarova. Uh, no, was it Sarova Panafric? Yes, I think that was a training for the Jubilee Women Caucus. Okay. And uh, I think there we were with Sabina Chege, Priscilla Nyokabi, Beatrice Elachi. You're uh, trying to empower the women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. you have. Yeah, okay. and, and bring as many young women in this political space. Because I am lucky to have mentors. That By is what way, I usually say. That, I am that is lucky. something many people don't, uh, uh, normally overlook. Yes, I am that. lucky. And mm. uh, if there's something about politics and, and young women, mm. Most of our, of our young women, and this is something, and uh, I know most of us are privy to, mm. most of our young women uh, tend to waste themselves in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are in a, in a male-dominated world, mm. uh, or rather the political scene is a male-dominated field. Mm. And you will find where young women fall prey to these male politicians. Okay. Because they do not have solid mentors, and of, it's a sad thing. Of, of which it is quite sad because... It is a sad thing. Uh, you, you don't need to compromise. No, to you don't need to. And that is what we are trying to tell our young girls. Mm -hmm. You don't need to compromise your principles. You don't need to compromise what you believe in. You just need somebody who knows what you want to hold your hand. Okay. And for sure, you, you will make it. You will be like them one day. Mm. Because we want to be the next Mother Karuas of this country. We want to be the next Wangari Madhais. We want yeah, to be the next yeah, Charity yeah. Ngilu. Mm -hmm. But these are women we know have, who have principles. So we need to work with people who have been where we are. Brenda, do you have more photos of yes. uh, that, that you're running? Uh, as you continue the conversation, just bring up uh, those. There is one that you look on my wake up. I really wanted you to tell me about that. There is one yeah. that I had, I had seen yeah, appearing okay. there. Uh, th uh, you saw it, this one? Uh, yeah, this, this is the same. You can see the DG Kiambu. Oh, this is the same event? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's the same event. That is Beatrice Elachi. I'm sure Wanjiko Kibe, MP Gatondo, and all this somewhere at the back. You can also see young women on that photo. A lot okay. of young women on that photo. So, yeah. so that was the same event. So um, you're, you're learning from these particular women leaders that uh, you are interacting with. Yes. And uh, is, is, is it because of that that informs you to make a decision to be able to get into an elective position in 10, 15 years? No, no, no. That's, that's just a personal conviction because even for the young people who we are working with, I am telling them, if you have a personal conviction yeah. that you want to go for an elective seat, go for it and we will come support you. Because we want to move as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you walk, uh, when you move alone, mm -hmm. you can walk far. But when you move as a group, you walk further. There is someone so, here, Stanley. Yeah. Stanley and Anauliza Hapevi. Mimi selewe kazi ya hii women koka senye munaongea hapa. Please help me understand what role they play in changing the political scene. Because mm -hmm. all I see is just talk, talk, and nothing happening on the ground. Mm. Tell him you're coming to a county near him. 
<laughs> and he will see us in action. <laughs> you know, actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. But in real sense, mm. uh, what we want to do is, like I was saying, mm. when you walk alone, yeah. you walk far. But mm -hmm. when you walk as a group, you walk further. So what we intend to do with this caucus is, these are young women uh, vying in Kajado County. Yeah. Uh, and politics is all about perception. You have been called to attend a Harambe somewhere. Mm. We are young people, we don't have money. You want to go and do some contribution. Mm. We will behind, we are behind you yeah. to come and support that you. That support battalion. Yes, we are, we are behind you to come and support you and, to, and tell you uh -huh. we are here to work with you. Okay. Because even people want to see that there are people behind you, people who are working with you. Yeah. And that's just the perception about politics. Yes, people yes. want to see that there are people pushing you, mm. you're not walking alone. And that is what we intend to do. Because... It is, it is quite sad. I, you can imagine with how tiny I am. <laughs> I, I, am I am vying for a seat in Moranga County. Uh, then I go and I show up alone. Will people even take you seriously? They won't. They, 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 maybe when you speak, they will take you seriously. But when you go as a group, you know, like they I, even I give you the morale. I saw a lady here who was moving, huh? That, uh, uh, and yeah. then they'll be like, oh, Mr. Limona, yes. they'll be interested in finding out more about you. Yes, and, and it's not all about young women. We mm. also want to support women in leadership. Wow. We want to support women in leadership. And, and, and this is mm. where the problem comes in, where mm -hmm. every political leader wants mm -hmm. to stand on their own. Mm -hmm. Someone say that, some, so someone will, will, will say, and it, it, it happens mostly, it's very co common among rising stars mm -hmm. uh, and, and i'm using that word rising stars very very selectively mm -hmm. the rising stars mm -hmm. they would want to to say maybe they, mm -hmm. they don't want to stand behind someone else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example you will say if 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 we are both vying for the same position mm -hmm. uh we may have a conversation that in this coming election mm -hmm. you will support me mm -hmm. and you would buy for that seat mm -hmm. but Una, you will get offended that why should you support me? Me and you not support you me. Not, yeah. yeah. Isn't that something that is uh, quite rampant among uh, in, the, in the political arena, especially among the young leaders? You see, people go to politics for different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, people have different convictions. And uh, it's true, people, uh, it, it is very hard. And, and you know, politics is quite investing. You've invested your time, your money. And then somebody comes and tells you that, uh, uh, you know, it's like coming to tell you, uh, I don't think you can win, but I think I can win. Yeah, yeah, Please yeah. come support me. Mm. Uh, but sometimes you just sit and analyze uh, the situation because sometimes we vie and we don't get it. Uh, we mm. go up to the ballot, we don't get it, but you tried. And that is all that matters. Thank you so much. Yes. Janet, yes. Uh, I want us to, to bring this conversation to a close. Okay. It is a pleasure. But I, I, I want to just give you time to wrap it up. Have a final word in regards to the conversation we've had today. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, let us know mm -hmm. in the political space that we are in. Mm -hmm. We are moving forward to an electionary period. Yes. Uh, it's less than a year now. Yes. I remember that it was a few weeks ago. I don't know how many months ago that. I, it, yeah, uh, last month. Mm -hmm. We are looking into August next year. The politics uh, that will that is going to shift uh, the a, a general election has already started. Yes. The conversation has started. Yes. And at the end of the day, Kenyans will need to go out and vote yes. for that person that they want, to, they, they, they want to vote for. Yes. What would be your general advice to the Kenyan youth watching it this particular Monday morning in regards to how they need to, you know, the focus mm -hmm. and, 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 and re, uh, uh, strategize in regards to who they need to support because it is the Kenyan youth that always gets misused during these general elections. Yeah. We are in an electionary period, and mm -hmm. if you look at this period uh, right now, my, uh, mm -hmm. my dear, you will realize that at the rallies, 90% mm -hmm. are the talk, Kenyan youth. Yes. What I will say is, one thing, before you support someone, when it comes to politics, Politics is about two things. Mm -hmm. One, the people, yeah. and two, you as an individual. Uh, so what I will say is, as a young person, do not agree to be misused by mm -hmm. politicians because they are, very, uh, they are very famous on the use on and dump. 
Mm. But I will tell you this, use your power to negotiate, to get something out of politics. Because even them, they are not there for the politics only. They are there to serve the people and personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Know why you support someone. No, Have I an agenda. They are, what is that word, ideology. Yes. What ideologies they subscribe to. Yes. Their manifestos, their targets. Yes. What are they fighting for? Yes. Know why you support mm. someone. Because at the end of the day, you will see people come, politic, politic, mm -hmm. politic. You take a center stage in the year politics. But when a member of parliament, if, if you're a, an added supporter of a member of parliament, a member of parliament has employees. Why don't you negotiate to be employed by that member of parliament as a young person? <laughs> Why don't you negotiate for us? Uh, for, for yourself. Jobs. Yes, for yourself. Mm. If you know somebody can get you a job somewhere else, why don't you negotiate for that? Know why you support someone. Is this someone who you support but cannot support you as an individual? Mm -hmm. Or is this someone who can support your dreams? Is it someone who can guide you on how to, to start a business? Is it someone who can go and guarantee a loan for you to start something for yourself? Wow. The bottom line is know why you support someone. That is Janet Rutugu, the yes. National Chair of the Jubilee Young Women Caucus. Yes. Janet, very vocal. Thank I you. Wish you. And I wish you the best. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been a best. pleasure. Th thanks for coming. It has been quite interesting. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes, you know, keep you. shifting the conversation. Women need to take their, their position. Yes. Yes. CIT, they belong to the kitchen. No, no, no. We don't belong no. to the kitchen. <laughs> we don't belong to the kitchen. And uh, women yeah. are the one, are, are the people who cause revolutions. Yeah. Because mm. if I say something today, if mm. you go to Mashinani, uh, mama aungea kitu kwa chama. Mm. Yo kitu itaenea the whole locality. Yeah. So women, us as women should use our voices for things that matter to us. Keep the conversation going. Yes. The hashtag is why in the morning. At Ramaguko, at Y254 channel that is on Twitter and Facebook. I was with Janet here in studio. I uh, will have you again oh, uh, uh, another day. Thank you so much for giving us uh, your time and uh, you. giving your opinion. I believe as a young lady, wherever you're watching us from, you've gotten something. Whether you are trying to become a leader, aspiring to be a leader, or thinking about it, you know, now you have some tips and you know what is taking center stage. We have been talking about church and politics and the issue in regards to the bill that is proposed in Parliament on BBI. Keep the conversation going as we continue with this morning show. But that brings us to the end of this uh, particular segment on youth and politics. My name is Ram Maguga. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit with more. This is why in the morning.